Well, we're doing something fun on the railroad at Garage Mahal this week. Learning how to back up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a talent. I'll tell you what, I, I still struggle. Well, this, this was the very first part of the railroad that we built. And uh, I always had a plan for here. People have said, how come the, the backdrop just ends down there? Shouldn't it wrap around the corner? Well, that would be a bit of a struggle since there's a garage door there. <laughs> there's a garage. Well, right here. This is the end of the paint booth. And my plan was always to hang a mirror on the end of the paint booth. Wow, that's a neat idea. To, to extend the, the view of the, the switching yard. So I clear back when we started working on it, I actually took it into Photoshop and tried putting a, a fake digital mirror in here to visualize what the effect would be. Well, that's cool, wow. Now clear back uh, years ago when I had my HO railroad, I did this exact same trick at the switching yard. I see. So I had a mirror at the far end down here, just out of frame, and it made my already pretty good size switching yard look just massive. Wow, because I know they do that with rooms to make rooms look bigger. Yeah, same idea. I see. Same idea. So the plan was to hang a mirror here on the end of the paint booth. For one thing, it'll hide the paint booth. Of course. <laughs> uh, but it'll also make this, this yard look really big. Oh my. Isn't that neat? That is just wild. So we finally got around to putting the mirror up just the other day. <laughs> And uh, now there's a couple of issues when you're using mirrors that you need to watch out for. And one is right here. It'll make uh, your backdrop symmetrical on either side of the mirror. Mm. And I, I don't care for that look. It's not too bad. No. But there are some things you can do to disguise the look so that you don't see the exact same trees from one side being reflected over onto the other side. Oh. So right now it looks a bit symmetrical, but if there was just something in the middle there to break up that symmetry, then, then that's going to look much better. I see. Well, one little problem I see is the other caboose. The letters are reversed. Yeah, everything from this side of the mirror ends up over there backwards. Ah. And that really gives away your mirror effect and looks kind of silly. I've seen people actually do lettering backwards so that it appears correct in the mirror. But, <laughs> but then you have to be careful that that backwards lettering doesn't show on the front side of the mirror or that's going to look really silly. Sort of like an ambulance when they come out, their, their letters are backwards so that they're frontwards in your rear view mirror. Exactly. Now, a third issue is if you can see yourself in the mirror. Uh-oh, there you are. That really gives away the fact that there's a mirror right there. There it is. <laughs> but I had to walk up to the edge of the layout and lean in in order to see myself in the mirror. If you plan this out ahead of time, you should be able to put mirrors on your railroad in such a way and in a position where you'd have to sort of uh, contort in order to see yourself in the mirror because you don't want to be able to see yourself in the mirror. That's, that's the view you want right there. Exactly. Now the other problem is the thickness of the glass. Yes. So there's always going to be a gap, especially in this case where the rails come right up to the mirror and then you've got the thickness of the glass and that's going to create a gap. In this case, there's more of a gap because the rails don't come right up and touch the glass. But even if they did, there would be a gap there. Right. So we want to make sure that we're hiding the gap and in this case, what I've done is ended these two tracks well short of the mirror, and I'm going to place a building front. Oh, that'll work. And that hides the, the edge of the glass, and it'll hide that gap in the other track, just like that. Well, there it is. Now, this isn't the actual building front. It, I could use this building front, but I have to cut it down. I don't want it to be quite this deep. I only want it to come to the end of these tracks, not clear out onto the tracks. But you can see that having the building front here hides the fact that there's a gap back here. Moreover, the car that I've tucked in here, you can't see the reversed lettering. Well, that's a wonderful idea. So it's, a, it's hiding a multitude of sins. There you go. Now what I like is you can actually see through that building, it looks like there's scenery on the other side. 
yeah, there's a whole new set of windows. Right. And scenery on the outside, and it makes the building look twice as deep as it actually is. I think that's the coolest part right there. Now, I notice there's, a, if you will, a crack or a gaposis there. What are we going to do about that? Well, there's also this gaping hole right oh. here in the backdrop. And this is, this is something I thought you'd be able to solve. Well, I can solve it in about two seconds. Let's put a pine tree right there. That's the plan. Like Al said, pine trees cover up a lot. <laughs> so that hole is there to attach a quarter round tree that you're going to build. Oh, fun. And notice that it also breaks up the symmetry. That's what I was thinking, something just different. Yeah, so this is hiding two different problems, the seam and the mirror, but also the fact that the backdrop is symmetrical. Right. You can no longer tell that the backdrop is symmetrical. Well, and plus I love a random pine tree. It just makes it feel like home. And then we're going to be able to string our power lines finally. Yes. And the reason we haven't been able to string them so far is they actually attach to your tree. Oh, uh, yes. And I think we will start with the power lines in the tree. So yeah, you can hook the power lines to the tree and we'll just coil them up and then string them down to the other end of the railroad. Mm -hmm. And it should look just like this. Right. Common sense would say start with that tree because it's going to be flocked by the time we're done. Yes. <laughs> But notice when you're back away from the building fronts and sort of uh, leaning in here, you also don't see yourself in the mirror, but you do see two cars on the little siding back there. Yes, I see. I don't want to see myself in the mirror, but yes, I'm <laughs> glad to see two cars. <laughs> yeah, and, and so there again, it's, it's helping to hide that, that problem where you might see yourself in the mirror and not seeing the seam because of the building fronts. Well, that just that's just looking fine. Right. That's going to be really perfect. You know, as I'm looking at this, you need some kind of a transition between the railroad and your paint booth. And I'm thinking of putting some kind of greenery at the foundation of the building with a, maybe a vine creeping up the building. That would be perfect. Right, because you just can't have an end right there and a paint booth begin. It doesn't make sense. Well, uh, the paint booth isn't much to look at, and this whole project down here is to hide the paint booth. So your idea would just play right into the idea of hiding the paint booth. Right, I like vines anyway. And if I've figured this out just right, it won't interfere with operations because a locomotive needs to be able to pull past the switch point here without running into the building uh, so that I have room to back the engine off of the siding through the crossover. Wow, check out the street lights. They go way down there. Yeah, five just became 10. Exactly. And I love operating at night because it's just, it's so fun having the lights turned on. Well, there's just something magical about any model that has lights. No kidding. And now we have twice as many lights. Well, that's a good way to do it too. Now, back when we had the MRS O-Scale Railroad, we utilized some mirrors down here in Lower Ironton. Oh. We had the, the subterranean Ironton under the buildings up above, and it's a labyrinth of basements and interconnecting tunnels and stuff under High Street. These are the buildings on top of High Street. Madam Wu. <laughs> <laughs> Woo -woo. No, just Woo. kidding. <laughs> But there's this lower area behind the street, and all of the basements, as you can see, open out into this lower area. And I kept telling the guys, why don't we model the insides of those basements? Wouldn't that be fun? Oh, of course. So we cut away the front of the layout right there, and we started building the basements underneath the buildings. And because it's a labyrinth down here, it's like, well, this is a perfect place for mirrors to make this labyrinth into a really big, interesting labyrinth. Oh, as it would be, how neat. So we used several different mirrors down here to enlarge the basement. Oh my gosh, a little bit Harry Potter there, wow. A lot. And then here, there's there are all these little scenes, and we wanted to make sure that the scenes didn't reflect in the mirror, or that would give away the mirror. So the mirrors were positioned in such a way that they extended the tunnels without reflecting the scenes. And that's hard to do. 
Well, that reminds me of that model I just put together. It was a book nook and it had an angled mirror and I couldn't figure out why the instructions wanted me to angle that mirror like that until I put the thing together. It was like, ah, so the lights don't reflect. Now, right here is a scene that we did want to reflect in the mirror. Uh, since it's a basement and, a, and there's a sewer down here and everything, we wanted to have the Phantom of the Opera. In the sewer? In the sewer. Well, that's where the Phantom lives in the in the book and in the, in the movie true. and stuff. And so the Phantom is actually behind this pillar where you cannot see him. And then he's reflected in a mirror over here, which makes it look like he's clear down a corridor off in that direction instead of being right up on the edge of the railroad. Meanwhile, back at Garage Mahal, we're installing the big, big mirror. That's just scary. That's a, a lot of breakage there. And that's why we hired some people to do it. <sighs> yes. And they came in and laser measured the wall here so that the mirror would fit up in there because no walls are perfectly square. No. And we wanted the mirror to fit as tightly up in here as humanly possible. And then the two guys here from Sugar House Glass showed up with this massive heavy mirror and glued it in place using mirror mastic or some kind of glue. <laughs> wow. And then it also required that they put a couple of screws into the wall to support the weight while the, the glue dried. But that's fine. Once this thing is in place, it, sh it should be up there permanently. It's going to be part of the wall. I sure hope so. Hopefully that grease is right in there. Yeah, you can drill through the stirrup ball too. Well, no. And then go very deep in there. Right. I'm drill. That helps. And there it is. Yes, and every time now I walk in there, I keep thinking, when did we put the divider in? It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It makes the garage feel twice as big. It does. And because it's up high, you can't see yourself in this mirror, but it is reflecting the logging railroad. Yes. And doesn't that look nice? Oh, it's really cool. But like I said, I keep thinking, where did we put the divider where in? Every time I come in. <laughs> Yeah, all of the building lights and everything extend back here. But the key is that we've picked up a whole new forest back here. Isn't that? Oh, I'm just amazed. This tree up here is the, the actual tree, and its reflection is back here. That's the same tree. What? Oh, that's but neat. It's just, you know, you, you're not aware of the fact that you're looking at a reflection. No. In this particular case, it's really quite seamless. If you look closely, you can see the edge of the unfinished railroad right here. Yes. And that's my next project, is to fill in the gap here. Ah. where the logging railroad ends and doesn't extend up to the mirror. I haven't been able to build this section because the mirror's not in place. I've also been working on the big trestle that crosses through the canyon down here, but here again I haven't been able to permanently do any of this work because the mirror wasn't there. Right. So the, the mirror has been uh, in the way of things. Oh dear! <laughs> so. We wanted to go ahead and get the mirror in place because we, we can't really do anything until it is. Well, now I see that we have a problem with the reflection of the furnace, but I think I might have a plan. Well, good, because, yeah, that looks kind of a mess. Yes, it'll either be a backdrop or a big cumulonimbus cloud. We also have the problem that I'm in the shot here. Now, how did you get there? <laughs> well, I'm on a ladder. Oh, well, we can get you down off the ladder then. So that, yeah, normally we, this wouldn't be a problem because normally I'm not going to be up here standing on a ladder. No, you're not. I love this scene. I think it looks so neat, and especially with all the trees in the backdrop now. Yeah, it's just really extended what was already a beautiful scene. Oh, now I want to go fishing. <laughs> Now we've got one more mirror effect that we want to show everybody, and that's deep in the lark mine here. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's lark because I built it on a lark. <laughs> right, it's kind of reflective of how silly we can be. <laughs> but down in that lower canyon where the big trestle goes through, I just thought, wouldn't it be fun if there was a mine down here under the trestle? It just kind of screams out for a thing like that. So there it is. Oh! The lark mine. <laughs> But notice that the entrance to the mine just goes right into the wall here. It does. There's no room at all for the tunnel to go back in there. And I really wanted to do something of the inside of the mine, just like Steve had done on his O-Scale Railroad some years ago. Oh, and that was my favorite part on his railroad. Everybody loved that. It, yeah. still, it still exists. It does, just not at Steve's. Not at Steve's. Somebody bought it and they're installing it on their railroad. But he did the entire underground workings of this mine and even the, the shaft over there and the head frame up above. But he utilized uh, a mirror down here in this tunnel to help extend this to make it seem larger than it already was. And it was pretty darn big to begin with. Well, this was my favorite part here because you'd swear it goes around the corner. And it's a mirror. Yeah, it doesn't go around the corner, but it, it looks like it should. It, it should, yeah. But real close inspection. And boy, do you have to look closely. There's a mirror right there. Yeah, I, ne I never noticed it. And it's on just the right angle so that it picks up the curvature of that track and makes the track look like it curves off into the distance. Yeah, just, just ingenious. I just could, That was my favorite part. So I thought we could utilize that exact same effect here at the Lark Mine. I want this tunnel to look like it goes straight back in there when in fact it just runs into the wall. But I thought if I model the tunnel so that it runs off to one side and then place an angled mirror in here, and if I can get everything to line up just right, it will look like that tunnel extends through the wall and into the other area, into the other room. I mean, you can see the, the mine here is only about four inches deep, but there's the solution right there. Oh my. So the tunnel actually runs along the surface of the wall with this angled mirror right here to reflect the tunnel to make it look like it goes back into the wall this way. That is, that's wild. Now the tunnel is also open at the far end and I thought, well, let's place another mirror back here because if we just leave it open, we're going to see things back there that we don't want to see. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> like me looking back in. Yes. But we also don't want to see me reflected in the mirror back there. So let's do like Steve did and angle it so that it makes the track look like it curves off into the distance. Well, that makes sense. So there's the finished version right there. That is cool. That just turned out really neat. You, you lean your head down here and look into this mirror and it looks like that tunnel goes way, way back there. Now I had to figure out the exact right angles for the mirror, so I just did that visually. The mirror is standing on the, the bottom of the mine, so it's not attached there. And then at the back, I had to make sure that the mirror was absolutely at right angles to the floor of the mine so that the floor didn't appear to go up or down or angle or anything. Also, the mine is going to have mine track, 15 inch gauge mine track laid in there. And the tracks are adding a whole new level of difficulty to the mirror. Oh dear. Because look what happens when you bring the tracks right up to the mirror. Yeah, and tracks don't make a right angle. Well, and they need to look like they're going straight back, not turning off to one side. Ah. So the tracks that are in the other tunnel appear to come up to the mirror as well. And what we end up with is a, a four-way intersection. Yes, a crossroads. With a lot of random rail just kind of free cut and hanging in space. And oh, it, it, looks, that, it looks a mess. It looks peculiar. <laughs> Well, it actually looks a little confusing trying to figure out what you're looking at, and I halfway expect Wile E. Coyote to come around the corner. <laughs> yeah, keep in mind that what we're seeing is that this track over here is a reflection of this track, and the track back here is actually the track that goes up the tunnel over here to the left. Oh. 
I thought about trying to build some sort of intersection here, but that gets really confusing because it's, it's hard to even track which rail is which. This rail is a reflection of this rail. This rail is a reflection of this rail. This rail back here is a reflection of this rail up here. And this rail over here is a reflection of this rail. It sounds like the freeway system in Salt Lake City. I thought about just putting a, a pile of dirt yeah. Which is what they did on the freeway. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> and then just, but I, I couldn't figure out any way to hide all of this mess. And so I thought, you know, in an actual mine, what you'd find here is a turntable. Right, because they've got to go up and down the alleyways. Yeah, you got to be able to turn the car. That's right. And so I thought, I'm going to take one of these little discs we've got, cut it in half, and see if I can't turn it into a mine turntable. Well, there you go. And that should cover up all of these random rails. We've got these discs that we got from Tori. He cut them on his laser cutter, and we were going to use them as uh, grates outside for the drains on the railroad and still might use them that way. But I thought if I flip one of these upside down and then cut it in half, it will make a perfect turntable. Well, there you have it. And then the rails on the turntable will have to be already turned at a 45 degree angle. Otherwise, that turns into a mess. But as long as those rails are perpendicular to the mirror, I think I can disguise that and make those look like the rails on the turntable. Well, there you have it. And that turned out pretty neat. Well, cool. And it covers up all of those random rails all cut at different lengths. As they say, it hides a multitude of sins. Boy, doesn't it just... So uh, the one thing that I don't like here, though, is there's a gap. Yes. And again, it's that same problem we talked about, that if you push things right up against the glass on the mirror, yeah, there's going to be a gap there. Yeah, it's the thickness of the glass where the reflective stuff is. Now, it's not quite so noticeable when you're down at the proper level for viewing it, but you can still see it. And I thought, well, I can hide it if I park an ore car right here, and then you're not really aware of the gap in the track and some of these problems. Right. But the gap in the turntable here isn't the only problem. While this looks like a bit of a mess uh, and is somewhat easy to hide with an ore car, the other problem is that lights in the mine throw a double reflection because the lights bounce off the front surface of the mirror and the rear surface of the mirror, and you get this, you get this ghost. Oh, it makes me want to see the eye doctor. No kidding. And I don't like that at all. And I want to have lights in the mine, and I don't want to pick up this double reflection. So here's what it looked like after I went ahead and put the lights in the mine, and the lights are blurry. The whole image is, in fact, somewhat blurry, but the lights have that that ghost halo around them. And I just I just don't care for that look at all. No, it looks peculiar. And so the solution to this problem turned out to be buy a new mirror, get an optical grade first surface mirror. And we found one on Amazon and picked it up and we had our friend Don come over because he's a, an expert glass cutter. Right, I wouldn't touch that with a 10 foot pole. Nope. But he, he does stained glass and he teaches stained glass. I used to always tell my students, just remember, it's just the sound of tearing paper. If it sounds like tearing paper, you're, you're doing, it right. doing it right. If it doesn't yeah. sound like tearing paper, you're screwing it up. That's probably what I did then the last time I tried cutting glass. <laughs> what? And then it shattered where it wasn't supposed to. Just like that. That's what you want it to sound like. And then you just hold it. Pick it up. You just hold it like this. And do that. Wow. And, and then you go, oh yeah, that's that glass. So what are you using for glass? My pistol grip. Oh, that. Oh, those are the greatest things. Oh, we gotta get one of those. Pistols. That's neat. Yeah, like it's in my little Sweet. Okay, there you go. Here we go. Sweet. Thank you. So the first surface glass, it, it looks like a regular mirror because when you look at it from the backside, it is kind of a regular mirror. But the front surface, the one we're going to be using, is covered with this blue protective material. And then when you peel that away, there's your reflective front surface. 
Well, that looks amazing. It's perfectly flat, optical grade mirror, and look how it looks in the mine. Oh, well, there we have it. So the gap there is barely visible. There's always going to be a seam, but you can hardly see it at all. But the thing I like the most is that the lights are now just crystal clear and the sides of the tunnel are just crystal clear and the track, everything, it looks just like it's right there. It doesn't look like a reflection in a mirror at all. Well, that's a testament to quality. And I think that pretty much finishes up the mine. It sure does. And now we're ready to move on to the rest of the canyon and get that all finished and finish the big trestle and. Now with the upper mirror in place, we can build the whole rest of the canyon and finish the logging railroad up there and everything. Including uh, some small details. That'll be fun. So you want to follow along with all that stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. And the easy way to follow along is if you're a subscriber and you've clicked on your notification bell so that you'll be notified when we mm -hmm. upload a video. Yeah. And the easy way to become a subscriber is to click on the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there. The blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here on Tuesday. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.